see some green, I see some green. Don't like to see blue. <laughs> Represents Dallas. <laughs> Questions for Kelly? Yeah. Don't know. This isn't Cowboys blue. <laughs> um, switching Fletcher onto Morris, it really seemed to kind of disrupt Morris. Just what was the matchup that you saw and, and saying, like, okay, we've got to do this and got to do it now? Um, I mean, Morris, I mean, like I said before the game, she's special. Like, she is, she's, a, she's a hard guard. And I thought Kiara did a great job in the first quarter. And then when we seen this uh, sub, she got off. She got loose a little bit. And then we just decided that it's Kiara. But we wanted her to tire herself out. And maybe, you know, she doesn't have as much lift on her shot, you know, towards the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Um, but, I mean, she, she's a pretty special player. That can, that can really light it up. I mean, she makes all the right basketball decisions. Emma. Aaliyah holds Angel the four rebounds today. I mean, do you feel like Aaliyah? she? <laughs> well, partly Aaliyah. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. It was collective effort. But I mean, do you feel like Aaliyah kind of took a step forward in the player of the year conversation today? I, I don't think Aaliyah has to do that. Like, I, I really don't. I think the beauty of Aaliyah is her entire body of work. And there's, there's not anyone in the country that produces like she produces on both sides of the basketball. Nobody. So um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I got no vote in it. I got none besides, you know, my mouthpiece is, I mean, she is, she is the best player in the country. On the side of Pete? Donna, you've seen more consistent dominance, I guess, that you wanted out of Camille. I mean, this was another terrific game for her. Is she rounding into that player that you believe she can get? I mean, yes, you, you see glimpses of it all the time. And, um, and I, I've always said that she, she's the difference maker. She, she's the separator. Like, if we don't get her production, it's probably a, a, a lot closer game than what it was. But, I mean, she's a hard guard. And when we have her and Aaliyah in at the same time, you, you, have, to, you have to guard them. Um, player for player and not necessarily double. And they, they didn't do a whole lot of doubling, especially towards the end of the game. They did go into a zone, but we created opportunities for both of them to be low. Um, and then they have to guard them, you know, man to man. And uh, we just threw it up. Rebuild did a great job passing it up to where only she could catch it and, and finish. Jeremiah and then Alan. Don, uh, <laughs> Don, uh, real quick, where did you get the, the chain from? Somebody gave me this as I was walking walking around the uh, <laughs> around the gym. <laughs> we got some of the best fans ever. Yes. Yeah, and then the uh, second quarter, uh, at one point LSU cut it to three. You guys did bring it back up to ten before you have time. Just uh, I guess kind of what happened at that period when the lead got down, and how did you guys manage to, to bring it back up? I mean, it's, they're 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 a really good team. I mean, we knew from the beginning it wasn't going to be like a one quarter game. They're they're they can score. Yeah, they can rebound the basketball. They can push. And they got Alexis Morris who can, you know, she makes good basketball decisions that we had to really scheme um, to tire her out. So she got going, um, got them close. And then, you know, over the course of 40 minutes, I just thought our depth really paid big dividends in this game. Alan, and then in front. Uh, you mentioned not being a one-quarter game. You get off to an 18-2 to two start. How much of that is goes into game plan, goes into practice? And what do you think you guys were kind of doing so well to get off to such a quick jump? I mean, the energy in the building, it, it really helps. And if you haven't really played in front of like 18,000, I mean, 9,000 is pretty good, 10,000 is good. But you play, when we played up at UConn, I don't know how many it was up there. 16,000, 16, you know, and then we come back and play in front of 18,000. It really, it helps us get a little bit more comfortable with playing in an environment like this. And I'm not saying that LSU is not not really used to it, but it's, it's a little bit different. It takes some time to adjust to. Here in the front. Hey, Don, uh, more on that, that environment tonight um, or this afternoon. Uh, it seemed to me like there were times where the crowd was cheering more for defense, whether that was blocking up um, someone above the three-point line or that block that uh, Aaliyah had. What does that say about the defensive culture that you've created here? I mean, our, our, our fans are, you know, they're students of the game. They, they understand um, how we created our success. And it's on the, the backbone of playing defense. Um, 
because you don't you don't know if you're going to score 80 points a night. You don't know if you want to score 60. But if you can hold somebody to you know 20 points under their average, it increases your chances of winning. So they they know that. I mean, also I think they know LSU is capable of putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. So they needed to insert themselves in the game and give us the energy to you know to, to lock in on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to go the bat to bat and brave, and then Chaz and then back to down. Yeah, Don, you talked about how Aaliyah shouldn't really have to prove that she's the best player in the country. A lot was made of this game in total in who the best team in the country was. What kind of pride do you have in your team to be able to go up there and set a note like that that really shows you are tier one and there's not really anyone else right there on your heels? I mean, it's great. I mean, it's great to, to play against a top three team in the country in this type of environment and the build up. I mean, the build up. We're, we're competing with um, Super Bowl coverage. And I, I thought it was highly publicized. I thought a, a lot of people were anticipating watching the game. I'd be I'd be uh, interested to see what the numbers are um, when they when they come out. But it's you know our our team. You know the players that decided to come to South Carolina. They wanted this. They want to be the best. They want to be the number one team in the country. They want to win national championships. And if you if you want that, then there's a lot of work that comes along with with actually doing it. And they, they do it time and time again. Saying it back with Chaz. <clears throat> Don, you guys picked up the big win at Stanford and UConn now here against LSU. You're with this team day in, day out. When the lights shine the brightest, what have you learned or what's been the most interesting thing from your perspective about this team, how they keep performing on the biggest stage? I mean, they, they're they great preparers. Like, they, they come into practice locked in. Like, they know. They've watched. I'm sure we... You know, we, we have them watch each each uh, each of our opponents before we actually game plan as coaches. So they they really know they really know the game plan before the game plan because they've been around us so much. They understand how to how to game plan. They know what to say when we're when we're talk when we're discussing uh, who our next opponent is, and. That helps. That's a culture of learning and growing and understanding what it takes to, to be great. Matt, no. Don, Bree has always been lauded for her defensive play, but this year she has, when you look at the whole season, she's had a number of clutch threes when you guys have needed them. How huge has her confidence as a shooter been to the success this year? Uh, I, I mean, I'm really happy for Bree. Uh, Bree's come a long way. I mean, she is, she is that player that is seasoned now. She knows what to expect. She's seen the type of defenses that people continue to play her, and now she's making them pay. Like she, she's making them pay from banging um, um, important threes, like at, at important times of the game, and and her assists to Camilla were were great. I mean, we needed that. We put her in a position where either she can pass it up or 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 drive it down somebody's throat. And she chose at different times to pass and different times to to drive it. So um, she's playing like a seasoned vet. On this side to Amanda in the back. Dawn, just now Kim Mulkey in her post-game presser said it's South Carolina and everybody else. A big gap there. What about your team allows there to be such a gap between the rest of the competition? Uh, I mean, we've been together for such a long time. I, I would have the credit just you know, our, our 2019 class that was unafraid to come in here and, 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 and just unafraid, super competitive, wanting to win a national championship, um, didn't care who was here, didn't care if that, that looked like they would have to sit. Um, they just wanted to win. And then they just have inc incredible chemistry. And then we have great leadership. I mean, Victoria's been here for five years now and it just it just clicks and they they just respect each other they hold each other accountable they they only want to win and they're going to do their part for that to happen yeah you've had like uh, i think it's five thousand three hundred and some days here in this job so um you've built this atmosphere that we saw today what's that like for you what's it like to to experience it when it's at a pinnacle such as this um, you know, I, I, I never, I never envisioned what the crowd looked like when I took the job here. Like, I, I just wanted to win. I wanted to uh, put a product on the floor that, that really people could be proud of. And I, I 
didn't see the crown. Like I didn't see, like I didn't say, let's fill Colonial Life Arena. Let's, I never, they, they did it. Like our, our fans did it. They just, you know, word of mouth came in here and decided that we're gonna, we're gonna back this team and we're gonna make it look like what a national championship team looks like prior to us even winning the national championship. So you, you gotta have that look, you gotta have that support. And our fans have done it, I mean, I don't know how many, how many years? Eight. <laughs> Eight, but before then it was like, you know, five was a great feat. You know, now that 5,000 people come in here, it's, something's really wrong. Like, <laughs> something's really wrong is only 5,000 fans are here. So I hope I'm, I'm still the coach here when, when uh, um, not when that happens, but I'm, I hope I'm this coach here that the <laughs> Colonial Life Arena is always packed. Other side is Hey, Coach, uh, rewind seven or eight years, and there were heat check type games where you could kind of see how your program matched up against a UConn uh, and what next steps maybe you needed to take to keep building. Now is the top dogs and Coach Mulkey trying to build your own pro power program at LSU. Was this kind of a heat check type game again, or is there any added motivation to remind an up-and-coming team like LSU how good y'all are? No, I mean, we, we, we all know, you know, what, what Kim is, is great. I mean, she gets she gets quality players. I mean, she, I mean she's got I mean she's got the best transfer player um, in Angel Reese. Um, she got Ladeja. I mean, she she put together a really a really great team, and she's coaching them up. Um, she put together the, the number one recruiting class uh, for for 2023. So she has she knows what it takes. I mean, she's well ahead of the schedule, like well ahead of the schedule when it comes to. Um, uh, making LSU a, a, a national powerhouse. So, um, I mean, no, I don't. I don't think it's a heat check. I think, I think everybody knows we're a good team. Like we've we've been together for for a really long time, and when you have that type of commitment, um, you you're going to win games like this. Next year, you know, it's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot. So, uh, we'll be different. Um, but hopefully we're, we're, we're still at the top. Donna, you've obviously made that walk around the court high-fiving fans and stuff before, but when you do that after a game like this, what are those interactions like? What does that feel like, and especially when you had a crowd like today? Uh, you know, what does that kind of feel like? I mean, we've, we've, we've built our success on that kind of access. Um, it's just a lot more now. And I, I mean, I feel the energy. Like, they are... They are happy, like genuinely happy for um, us winning um, because they feel like they were a part of it. And if you feel like you're a part of it, I gotta, I gotta meet you where you, where you are. I meet our fans where they are, and <coughs> they want pictures, they want, they want autographs, they want selfies, they want, they want it all. And I want them to keep coming back. So um, taking that walk around the court is, is, is par for the course for us. Shot, and then we'll. Hey, Don. Rashad Milligan from Rolling Out. I wanted to ask you a, a bit of off-topic thing. Uh, you have the Randall Cunningham jersey on uh, right now. Uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be talking about the two starting black quarterbacks tonight in a historic Super Bowl. But um, just thinking about Randall Cunningham and his legacy, what do you think he did to lay that groundwork for uh, black quarterbacks? Uh, I mean, Randall, Randall um, was a um, ceiling breaker. Um, when it's, it was probably not very popular to have a black quarterback. Um, and, you know, in Philadelphia, I don't really think they care. They want to win. Like, we want winners. And Randall Cunningham did that for us. And he did it in, in such an exciting fashion. Um, and I think because of that, you know, Jalen can see, Jalen can see what he can be and where he can take us. And he's taken us all the way you know, to to a Super Bowl win. Alan, we're gonna let. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna win. Like we are gonna win. Like I, I do believe in Sartan one, and I do believe that it's divine intervention. It's divinely ordered that that young man wins for what he's been through. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Alan and Emily.
I hate to break up this meeting of the minds between Eagles fans, but um, these late third quarter, LSU kind of gets it within single digits. You go to the Johnson and Fletcher lineup together, covering a lot this year. Was that just trying to keep Fletcher in the game on Morris? Was that just trying to get him? What do you like about that lineup, and why do you think they were able to kind of put the game away? Yeah, I mean, Kiara made us play her because she played Morris probably better than anybody, any other matchup. Um, and then I, you know, I, I, I like the fact that Raven, Raven looks to get our post the ball. So it gives us an opportunity for um, us to have the best of both worlds. To defensively, just keeping the, the heat on Morris um, in that great matchup. And then, you know, Raven pushing tempo and getting the ball to, to where it needs to go. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm super happy for Kiera. Like, she's been working extremely hard, and I know, um, you know, it was probably a hard pill to swallow in Connecticut, but <coughs> she came back. Like she's, she's a better player because of it. Like, she's putting herself out there. She played well at Auburn. She played well today. And that's what, that's what being competitive is all about. If you don't like a situation, change it. Like, put me in a position to say, hey, keep me out here. And that's what she did. Emily. Closing out with some Eagles. Um, for, I know you and Jalen have a relationship. Have you talked to him at all since you know the playoffs have begun? Given any words of wisdom on you know going for a championship? I, I just text him after we after we beat um, San Francisco. I just said one more. Did he reply? Yeah. What did he say? Let's go. <laughs> simple, simple man. It's simple. I don't I don't want anything. I just I just want one more. I want the city to go crazy. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.